You may have heard that there are limits to how much data you can store within AppSheet. And that is 100% true. It's, it's true of any type of system. There are limits on how much data you can store and how that system is going to perform when you have very large data sets within it. And this is especially relevant when you're using Google Sheets to connect to your AppSheet app too, because Google Sheets isn't really a database at its core. What it is is a spreadsheet, and therefore it has even bigger limitations than if you were using an actual database behind your AppSheet app. So that's what we're gonna look at here, what these limits are specifically around Google Sheets for this video, and when you might start to run into those limits so that you can start to plan ahead. But before we get to that, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Doug, and what we do on this channel is talk about Google AppSheet and AppSheet-related technologies. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for continuing to watch. So in order to help answer this question, I've created a moderately complex demo app. It's a commerce app, definitely the type of app that you'd be using AppSheet for in the real world. And I've also created a script that lets me generate random data sets of various sizes. And this script can do that very quickly. So I can basically just generate data sets of say 100 records, 1000 records, 5000 records, feed it directly into AppSheet and then test to see how the app actually performs with those various size data sets. All right, let's take a look at just that. All right, let's start by just taking a quick look at the AppSheet documentation, and I will include the links to these two documents that I'm looking at down in the description. But something to keep an eye on, especially if you're starting a new app, is the number of rows that you're allowed to have uh, specifically for AppSheet database when you're creating a new app. If you do a plan to exceed this number of rows, you just want to make sure that you have the correct license to be able to do that and otherwise you want to create in sheets versus uh, using the app sheet database because there aren't those same limits on the number of rows that you can have. So that's number one. Number two is the actual limitation as far as the, the amount of data that you can have within sheets. And basically the recommendation here for sheets is that your maximum compressed data size, and it's hard to tell exactly what your compressed data size is going to be, is uh, five megabytes or 10 megabytes. but Probably an easier number to keep an eye on is that you do, do not want to exceed 100,000 rows or 1,000 columns within your spreadsheet. So that's, it. again, it's hard to tell without actually exporting your database and compressing it to what the actual compressed value is. But you want to keep an eye on this number that you don't have across all of your tables more than 100,000 rows because then you're going to likely be running into... Uh, the, some of the slowdowns that we're going to be seeing here as we go on. Okay, now on to the, the app that I actually created for being able to test and demonstrate this. So again, this is an app in the commerce space. The main table that I have for it is orders here. Uh, and associated with orders, we have customers. Associated with customers, we have addresses. Associated with orders, we also have the items that are in the order. So uh, each order has three items within it in this particular case. And then we also have a catalog of what those items are. So there's a thousand items in that catalog. And basically when you place an order, it links three items, three random items to that order uh, through this table uh, to the 1000 items that we have available in the catalog. There are one of the, or three of the 1000 items within the catalog there. Uh, so to actually create our order. We also have related to an order correspondence. This is assigned to 5% of the orders. And when there is correspondence on an order, we have five messages of correspondence as well. So all this is basically just to, again, create a moderate complexity app where we do have a good number of relationships similar to what you'd have in the real world in a app sheet moderate complexity app. All right, one other thing to look at here is this is the script that I run to generate my random data to populate into this app sheet app. Uh, you see, I just ran it here with 100 orders. That's what's shown right here. You also see down in app sheet down at the bottom on this tab, it shows the number of orders that are there. So as I start to add more in, you'll see that number update with the number of orders that are actually within the system at that point in time. Uh, one other thing to call out here is the the value that I put in down here is the number of orders, which we see right here. And for every time it creates a, it does a run of this, it creates 75% of the number of orders in customers. So 
for 100 orders, I have 75% of that, which is 75 customers. Each one of those customers has one address, so I have 75 addresses. Uh, each order, again, has three items in it, so we have 300 order items in it. Uh, and 5% of the orders have correspondence, and for each time there's correspondence, there's five messages, so that's why we have 25 here. So these numbers always apply and are based on this number here. And the reason that I point this out is basically just to show that what we're looking at each time we increase the number of orders is a proportionate scale of the full amount of data. So everything is completely linear. So what you're seeing when you actually multiply the number of orders is, is multiplying the total amount of data within the app. All right, that's all the boring details. Let's look at it actually run now. So I'm going to zoom out so we're looking at the actual uh, you know, desktop uh, computer version of the app here. So you see we've got 100 orders in there right now. And if I click refresh, it's incredibly fast refreshing with 100. Obviously, that's pretty much nothing for AppSheet to handle. So let's up that to 1,000 just to see how much it slows down. So just put another zero in there. And again, our data scaled up linearly here. We now have 1,000 orders, 750 uh, customers, et cetera. All right, let's go back here and refresh again. See, a little bit slower, but still decent speed. But we definitely did see a slowdown there with the 100. Let me do it again. So yeah, a few seconds that, that is introduced there by having 1,000 records. Now let's go up to 5,000. And one other thing to point out here, remember that AppSheet and the documentation was recommending total compressed size. I also have this estimating the compressed size here. Remember they said that between five and 10 is the maximum that we wanna have. So we just ran this with 5,000 rec, 5,000 orders, and we're currently at estimated compressed size of 2.55 megabytes. So still below what they're suggesting. I'm gonna go back and refresh this again. Okay, it just came back. Let's try it again. All right, so not too bad. Still definitely acceptable, at least in my mind. All right, uh, let's go to 10,000 to double that again. All right, 10,000. We're now up to five megabytes compressed. So the bottom level of what Google has suggested as far as the maximum size that you want to have in Sheets. So let's refresh here and see what this looks like. All right, still not too bad. Let me refresh one more time just to make sure we're not seeing a fluke there as far as how fast that went. Okay, it's still it's still really not bad. All right, let's go up again to 20,000. Double it again. All right, we're now at 9.9 .9 megabytes compressed, so really pushing the limit of what Google suggested there as far as the data. Again, 20,000 orders. Let's look at what the refresh looks like. Okay, so loaded there, you know, not 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 too terrible, but if you're seeing that kind of slow load time every single time you're loading up the app, you're probably not going to be loving it. You're probably going to be wanting to do some things about it. All right, let's try to do one more test here to actually go over Google's suggested limit as far as the compressed data size. This time I'm not going to double it because I already tried that and I end up running into errors just with the 
on the actual creation side, trying to push that much data into Google Sheets that quickly. So I'm not going to double it. I'm just going to go to 30,000 instead of 40,000, which you can see there I tried to do <laughs> right before this and, and started running into an error. So we're going to try to run it with um, 30,000, see what that comes out to as far as the compressed size, and then see what that looks like as far as actually refreshing the data or the time it takes to refresh the data. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to actually refresh this. And this is probably going to take a minute. All right, so there we go. So that's beyond Google's recommendation. We're at 14.8 megabytes as far as the compressed data, or at least estimated compressed data uh, above their recommended 10. And we're at 173,500 total rows within this uh, sheet, which again is well above their 100,000 uh, recommended for using within AppSheet. So this is kind of worst case scenario. If you if you get to this level, you definitely want to be looking at some alternatives to just using Google Sheets. Now, all of this really depends on your specific situation, the app sheet plan that you have, your network connection speed, your computer speed, whether you're using a computer or you're using a mobile device, it's going to be different depending on what specifically you're doing. To help you see how the size of data affects performance with your specific setup, I've created several versions of that app with different data set sizes. And I'll share these with you so that you can test them yourself. Just use the link down in the description to request them and I'll send over a link so that you can access those apps, make copies of them and try it yourself. So your next question is probably, if your database starts to get very large like that and your app starts to really slow down like that, what do you actually do about it? Well, there's a number of answers. They, what you do really depends on your specific situation, like the type of app sheet license that you have, the type of database that you have, et cetera. And we're gonna be covering all those things in upcoming videos. So keep an eye out for those. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. Until then, thanks for watching. And as always, happy building.